Hey guys, this is Joy from Codilla Technologies and for today's tutorial what we're going to discuss is how to make changes to Magento's code functionality without actually touching Magento's code or actually directly touching it at least. So what does this mean? So many a times we might be faced with a situation or a scenario where we have to change the functionality of how Magento handles its data or how Magento displays its data. And at that situation, it's a very bad practice to actually go ahead and change Magento's code directly. Because let's say we change the Magento's code directly and at a later point of time, we are upgrading our Magento version. So at that time, whatever changes we made to our Magento code inside the Magento's code folder would just cease to exist and our code would not work again. So that's why in today's lesson, I'm going to show you a couple of tricks and tips which Magento has provided us to make changes to these core functionalities of Magento without actually touching the Magento's code. So without wasting further time, let's get started. All right, so as you can see, I have my demo store set up with all of the demo products and I also have my IDE set up. So I also have made a module as you can see, it's just a blank module, it has nothing as of now. And for today's uh, task, let's say what we'll do is, so all these products in the product listing page has some name uh, which is being displayed in it, right? So this name uh, is coming from a model probably. And what we are gonna do is, uh, let's say if the price of that product is uh, less than, let's say 70, if the price of the product is less than 70, then we're gonna say so cheap. We're gonna write so cheap along with the name. And if the price of the product is greater than 70, then we're gonna write uh, so bloody expensive or something. So uh, as you can see, this is a change in the functionality of how Magento works, right? So this name is probably being uh, uh, returned by some model and we are making some changes to this. So how do we do that? So firstly, what I'm gonna show you is what not to do in this scenario. So I'll just go here and I did a little bit of snooping around with the Magento's code and what I found out is this uh, name of the product is being displayed from the product.php which is inside the model folder of the catalog uh, module. So I'll just open that file and inside this file if I go to, uh, I'll just search for it, if I go to get name, so as you can see there's a function called get name. And as the name suggests, this get name function returns the name to this uh, page and it just displays the name of each of the products. So let's just test this. I'll just uh, comment out this line. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna return something like, let's say, blah, blah here. All right. So now if I refresh this, uh, I'm just gonna have to clean the cache. So bin slash Magento cache clean, sorry. Uh, All right, bin slash magento cache clean. Yeah, so now if I refresh, go ahead and refresh this. What you're gonna see is all of these products would return the blah blah, which I had just written from that get name function. So sure enough, all the products are returning blah blah for now. So it's a pretty simple concept, right? We can just come here and instead of blah, blah, we can write whatever logic we want to write here. Like uh, we can get the price and we can return so cheap or so bloody expensive along with this. And that would work, right? That would show up here. So that's our job done. But that's exactly what I told you not to do because that's a very bad practice because this file is inside the Magento score folder and we never, ever, ever change the Magento score folder. And I explained to you why, right? So what to do then? We can't change this file, so we're stuck. So what else can we do? So I'm just gonna show you a couple of things which Magento has given us to do this thing. Uh, so the first thing which we can do is we can use something called preferences. And the second thing is uh, we use something called events and observers. And the final thing is we use something called plugins, which was introduced in Magento 2 as, and was not there in Magento 1. So what are these three things? So I'll start with plugins. So plugins are by far the best way to make any changes to Magento score functionality. So if we are in a situation where we can use the plugins to make some changes, blindly just use the plugins. You don't have to think about anything else. The second thing is events and observers. So there are a couple of things, couple of situations in which we can't use the plugins. So in, that, in those situations, we can use the events and observers. So what I'll write here is uh, if 
plugins fail and finally the preferences so preferences are you can say a little bit of dirty way to do the changes in magento but still it's better than making the changes to magento score folders directly so this you can say we, we have to use this if everything else fails and then i'm just going to give a sad smiley huh. so yeah uh, in all seriousness so this is the sort order in which we have to use so whenever you use plugins we can use plugins we should use plugins at every point of time there are some situations where we cannot use plugins i'm going to tell you about those situations right now uh, so in those situations we have to use events and observers and finally when both of these fail then we always have preferences and using preferences you can count on me that we can make changes to almost any functionality magento has to offer so uh, let's start with plugins then so what are plugins so plugins you can say in short is a brilliant way to actually make changes to all of the public methods of all of the classes so in this scenario we'll take the product.php class for an example so keep it in mind that only public methods can be modified using the plugins so protected as well as private methods cannot be unfortunately modified using plugins so uh, how does the plugins work exactly so first i'm going to show you what are the types of plugins which magento has uh, made us uh, made available so one is uh, the before plugin one is after and the third one is around so there are three types of plugins which we can use in magento 2 so what are these three types of plugins so the before plugin like the name suggests is executed right before the actual function so if you're writing a function for get name so this before plugin would be executed right before the actual function which is this get name is executed same with after the after is uh, executed right after the actual function is executed and finally the around which is a little bit tricky so the around plugin is executed both before as well as after uh, the actual function is executed so how does that work so uh, basically uh, what happens is inside our uh, around plugin what we have is a callable method so let's say we call it dollar c so this uh, around plugin takes a callable uh, parameter a callable uh, variable as a parameter so let's say we have dollar c for example so what is this callable method so that callable method would be the actual function which we wrote the around plugin for so let's say this is our plugin so we'll have a dollar c here so wherever we call dollar c like this we have wherever we call the function and we can take the response so this uh, response would have whatever uh, response this uh, get name function or whatever function we are adding the plugin for is returning so using this around before and after plugin we can make changes to a lot of uh, core functionalities of magento so for our example which is to make changes to the actual name of the products uh, what i think is the after plugin would be the most suited because we can take the actual data from the get name function and then we can just uh, append using our own logic we can append so cheap or so bloody expensive on top of it and we can just return that and that would get displayed here so uh, we've decided that we'll use the after plugin but how do we make the plugin so i'll come back to my module which is uh, the codela demo module which, which we uh, saw earlier so here inside the etc folder i've created a directory called frontend because that is the scope in which our plugin will be executed and inside frontend we have a di.xml file so this di.xml file actually registers our plugin on top of uh, this magento's product php class so how does that work so uh, here you can see we have the type name is equal to magento catalog model product so that means that the product function is i mean the product class is uh, the class for which we are writing a plugin for and inside that we have the plugin name is equal to so this can be anything for this example i just wrote plugin for product name and the type would be the class which has the function which we uh, want to use as the plugin so uh, in this scenario we have codilar demo plugins and products so uh, always keep it in mind to put your plugins inside some folder called plugins or plugin to keep it organized so i just created a, a directory called plugins and all my plugins would be present here so for this example we have the product.php so this is the class it's a very simple class we just have the namespace and the product inside that since we are writing a plugin for the get name function and it is an after plugin so here the name of the plugin would be the function would be after get name so that's it the after uh, followed by whatever the name of the function we are adding the plugin for so there would be two parameters uh, which the after uh, after plugin takes so the first parameter is an object of the class so this is the class so an object of the class for which we are adding the plugin so that is the first parameter so i as you can see i took it in the dollar called pro, uh, variable called dollar product and the second parameter is the name i mean it's the 
a variable which or the data which this function is returning so whatever data this function returns would be the uh, second variable in the after plugin so we have the name since it's returning the product name i think it's fair to call it dollar name so here i just wrote my logic if uh, we just get the price from product product of get data price then if the price is less than 60 i just appended so cheap on top of the name and if it is greater than 60 or equal to 60 then i just appended so bloody expensive and then i'm finally returning the name variable so that would uh, like return uh, the name of the product by appending whatever we want appended using our logic so now if i refresh this page what we uh, should see is the so cheap or so bloody expensive being appended on top of this uh, actual name of the product using our plugins. So as you can see sure enough we have uh, so cheap, so cheap and so bloody expensive since it's uh, equal to 60 and like that we can see all of the product names have been changed. So we successfully changed the core functionality which is changing the name of the product using plugins. In the second uh, way we'll be uh, experimenting with the events and so next we come to events and observers so what are events and observers so basically uh, events and observers are a way to intercept magento's flow so whatever magento's flow is uh, we can intercept the regular flow of uh, magento by inserting or you can say observing some of the events which magento fires so Magento fires a lot of events in between its flow and wherever we, let's say there's an event for uh, called customer underscore login. So this event will be fired whenever customer logs in. So if we observe this event in our own observer, we can write some logic to change some of the functionality in which what should happen after login. So for example, we can use this event to write a function or write an observer to send an email to the customer whenever he logs in or something like that. You get the point, right? So, uh, for this uh, example as well, uh, again, we're gonna, I just uh, resetted my plugin, so we have the actual name again. So using uh, events and observers, what we're gonna try to do is the same thing, we're gonna append the name names of the products uh, with so cheap or so bloody expensive using events. So uh, after doing a little bit of research on how uh, Magento displays the products, I found out that inside the catalog uh, module, we have the block and inside that we have product and here we have the list product.php so this is the uh, you can say this is the block which is responsible for rendering all of these products so it just renders the product collection you can say so if i just search for event here so uh, as you can see here in the function uh, let me just scroll a little bit up so in the function initialize product collection we can see just at the end after uh, getting the product collection and doing all the manipulations to the product collection an event is being fired where the collection is being passed so the name of the event is catalog block product list collection so if we listen to this event we can modify this collection right before its return so that we can append the name of the product with whatever we want to append it so uh, if we come back to our module, so inside the etc in, and the front end, as you can see, I have created another file called events.xml. So this events.xml has the event declaration. So this basically, this uh, three lines basically means that for the event catalog block product list collection, I want to observe, and this is uh, just like the plugins, we can have any name we want. It's just for identification purposes. So the instance is the name of the class where our observer is there, which class will observe this event. So we have Codilla demo observer product. So inside the observer directory, as you can see, we have a product.php file. So this product.php file is again a pretty simple file. It just implements the observer interface and uh, since it implements the observer interface we have to write this function the execute function which takes the observer as a parameter so inside the observer we will get the data for this example we are getting the collection inside the observer so this collection is actually the name of the key which is being passed as the data so this can be product this can be customer depending on which event we are observing so for this example we have the collection uh, and in, we're just running a for each inside the collection and here we are writing the pretty same logic again if the price is less than 60 just append so cheap and if the price is greater than 60 or equal to 60 just write so bloody expensive on top of it and then we ju we're just setting the data again and then uh, whatever the collection is is modified and finally if I refresh this page I should be able to see uh, so cheap and so bloody expensive again uh, appended to the names of the products using observers so let me just wait for it to reload and yeah sure enough we have so cheap and so uh, bloody expensive appended to the names of the products 
and this time we used events and observers to do it. So finally we are going to see how we can use preferences. So finally we are going to use preferences to do the same task. So what are preferences? So uh, we figured out that plugins will be executed before after or around every function and events and observers will be or you can say observers will be hooked to all the events inside functions. Preferences basically means that we want to execute our own. So let's say there's a function called product, right? So there's a, I mean, there's a class called product, sorry. So there's a class called product and let's say this is present inside some directory called Magento and here we have a product.php file. So let's say instead of this uh, file, whenever someone creates an object of the class product, we want to call it from a directory called codilar slash product.php and we want to call this file and the class inside this file. So preferences allow us to do that. So basically what preferences will do is whenever some uh, object of this class is created, it will check if any preferences are there for this class and if any preference is there, so instead of calling this file, it would call this file and it would load the class inside this file. So using that we can pretty much change almost all the functionality of Magento because we can change all of the classes or we can add preferences to all of the classes and we can uh, change the functionality as we wish inside our own class, right? So I'll just show you how that works. So firstly, uh, <clears throat> so this is the class we want to make a preference for, right? So this class is Magento Catalog Model Product, the namespace and the class name. So if we come back to our module, so here inside etc frontend and DIXML, you can see I wrote something like, so the first one is for the plugin, so we can ignore that for now. So here you can see I wrote something like preference for and type, we can write it in the same line as well. Yeah, so preference for and type. So for means for which class do you want to set a preference and type means what is the preference. So basically what this line tells Magento is that the Magento catalog model product is the class and whenever someone creates an object or tries to create an object of this class, do not do that. Instead of that, create an object of Codilar demo model product class. So if we come to the Codilar uh, demo model and product.php, so this is also you can see it's a pretty simple uh, class. So it has uh, the namespace Codilar demo model and the class product. So you can see I just extended the actual product model which we have a preference for. The reason I did that is because if I don't do that then I have to write all of the function because all of these functions, all of these lines are necessary for this uh, class to work. So if I am writing a preference, I need to either write or either I need to copy and paste all of those things or a much more simpler way to do it is using inheritance in which I just extended the actual parent class and then I can just uh, change whatever function I want to change. So for our example, we want to change the get name function. So inside get name, I'm just first calling the parent get name. So that would execute this uh, class's get name function and get the actual name of the product. And then I'm writing, uh, uh, I mean, I'm applying some of my own logic here. The same thing, I'm just getting the price. And then if it's less than 60, up and so cheap. If it's greater than 60, up and so bloody expensive. And then return the final name. So that would just uh, return the appended uh, name to the uh, page and it would just display that. So basically what's happening is whenever this uh, class, I mean an object of this class is being created or Magento is trying to create it, the DIXML uh, tells Magento that don't create the uh, class, I mean the object for this class, instead of that create it from this class. And that is what is happening so that this get name function is being overridden and if we refresh this, we can see that using preferences, we can change the functionality of Magento and the name would be appended with so cheap or so bloody expensive depending on the price. So if I just wait for it to reload, yeah, so it, you can see it this uh, so cheap and so bloody expensive again came up and that is coming using preferences. So uh, <clears throat> we successfully used preferences, events, observers, as well as plugins to do this pretty much the same thing. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, plugins are the best way to do it. And whenever you cannot use plugins because let's say the uh, method is private or protected, we can look for events because if the events are being dispatched from there, then we can modify the objects or the uh, classes or whatever functions using events and observers. And finally, if both of them fail, we always have preferences. We can use preference to, uh, preferences to change almost all classes and almost all functionalities. So uh, that's all for today. So I hope you uh, enjoyed uh, watching the tutorial.